Hi, I'm Pang Mo from Rocket Screen. Uh, this will be a multi-part tutorial on how to use the Huawei Kochang Pick and Place Machine or HWGC for short. Before we, we begin, I would like to mention that I have been using this machine for about 13 months now. We bought it somewhere around August 2020 and today is September 2021. So it has been 13 months. So throughout these 13 months, we have managed to churn out about a few thousand of bots uh, ranging from very simple bot to I would say maybe medium complexity. Right. So throughout that time, of course, uh, because there's not much documentation or tutorial or guide on how to use this machine other than a very thin, uh, I think about 13 or 14 pages documentation. Uh, there's nothing else that you could use to refer to so but we still managed to use the machine quite uh, to the point that there's not much issue but whenever we come into some small issue or problems that we are unsure of of course we went to ask for some help in this case uh, there's a company that called Beijing Glitchin that is where we bought this machine from they are basically uh, reseller of uh, HWGC machine for years and they are the one also that brought us to Beijing uh, to Huawei Kojang's factory in Beijing back in December 2019 so it was there that we we tested machine by bringing our own uh, PCB and components to test out the machine in per personally testing it out and that was there that we decided to buy the machine other than that we did another trip earlier before that in August 2019. We went to the uh, factory in Shenzhen, China. So it was there that we met another guy who runs the, the place. Uh, and we became friends from there. And he was another guy that uh, from time to time, if we have a question, we have something that we couldn't figure out, he's the one to help us. And But like everyone out there that owns a machine, similar machine or typically any machine from China uh, there's lack of documentation on the, how to use uh, the machine so this guide is basically to fill that gap okay so let's start I'm going to start the software here this is the picture of their latest machine launched a few months back Okay, this is how does the software looks like. This is a picture of their new factory actually in uh, in a city called Si Chia Chuang. It is basically a city in the state or they call it province in China. The province of Hebei which is a state next to Beijing. Uh, the HWGC guys have to move up from Beijing. Further up from Beijing uh, due to increased cost, operational cost and also the tighter rules. If you are running a factory or anything that produces waste, nowadays they will ask you to, you know, basically get out from Beijing and go elsewhere. Right. So this is not a fake picture or, you know, some graphical uh, photo, but it is their real new spanking new factory. Okay, so let's, before that, let's take a look on the system setting here. Uh... Okay, the software that I'm using currently is 8.0.0 with a minor revision 3, right? I believe this is the latest revision that is available for for user. Okay, if you are coming from the old software, which we were, it was, I think it was something like 6.5 or 6.7. I, I couldn't remember, but if you were coming from that and you wanted to upgrade to this version, you will need to software register under this this part when when you want to upgrade you need to copy there's a there's a unique ID of, ID of your machine that's only unique to your machine uh, you will need to copy that particular ID and pass it to your either Huawei Kochang or any of your reseller that you guys bought the machine from and they would then re generate a key code specifically just for your machine and that that needs to be input here in order for you to 
uh, upgrade to a major revision like this 8.0.0 but if you're, you already have let's say you're already on the version 8 and you're upgrading maybe for minor revision 1 that that process is not needed and as you can see here we have a t4 sg 50f machine over here so it is basically a four nozzle uh, screw guide and 50 feeders they no longer produce any belt driven uh, machine but this is this sg just to to keep their original uh, model numbering naming scheme there's quite a long list here but not all these machines are available outside of china uh, the one that is available as far as i know the one that's out available outside of china is the one that we have here and i believe is this guy which is the six nozzle with the 64 feeders another one is probably the t8 sg atf that that one comes with 8 nozzle with 80, 80 feeders okay and I'm not going to talk about the rest of the stuff here for today maybe on another video in the future but for now we do not need to touch anything here and as you can see the software the menu are all disabled by default unless you connect to the machine so you need to connect to the machine a real machine and in order to use the software i believe this is a is a way for them to protect the ip because competition itself in in china is very fierce i mean in beijing alone itself there's there's quite a few of similar size companies that produces the similar type of machine similar hardware configuration but obviously they are running very different software uh, companies like kayo then you have boritech then you also have bowie just to name a few they are all in Beijing so I believe that's one way they're trying to protect their IP okay let's connect to the machine just make sure your machine is powered up because if you never do that this, the software is gonna crash okay so and also ensure your air compressor is already up and running okay we are in right today we are we are going to create a project from scratch so click on the project create slash open we are going to create a project and i'm going to open an existing project click on create project and uh, you need to name your project so basically our project today will be named amuro usually i will keep a revision folder here just to differentiate what revision board that we are currently using it and uh and again i will sub divide the folder into two one that consists the pick and place machine uh, uh pick and place related files uh the one is, that is being used by the software another another folder is for the pcb design it's just for a reference so i'm gonna name it as i want it as as you might have noticed that when you type something in the machine it might suggest you some chinese character for you to choose this is because the the machine runs on windows 7 on a but a, a chinese language configuration so but after all you might get used to it it's not something that is so hard oops okay once the project is created you have two options is either to manual edit or import a PCB file it is not importing a PCB file basically but it is importing a PCB component position file and by doing it manually actually you don't import any file but what you do is you basically tell the software that uh, component 1 is located at this particular location with this particular rotation and component 2 is located here another point somewhere on the pcb with this particular rotation and so forth but if you have a very simple pcb like that then i think it's okay i mean you have a couple of components then it's fine but if you have something more complicated i would suggest that you do the proper way of importing the pcb components position file which we will do today i'm not going to talk about manual edit today so let's go ahead and import a pcb file 
and as you might have noticed there's no such thing as save button here on the software so whatever you do when you type in when you enter and when you hit the enter button that is being saved so you do not need to look for a button to save your settings or anything right okay before we we import the pcb component files uh let's 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 look at the pcb physically first right let's take a look at a board that we're gonna assemble today so this is our new board that this was hand assembled but being reflow we haven't tried it on the machine yet and this will be the first time we are trying it on this particular board we have one big 12 tram 12 mm lora one module we have a qfn 48 this is 0.4 mm pitch it's quite tight and the machine can do down to 0.3 mm pitch so today we will be testing quite near the limit of the machine and we have one DFN I think this is a WSON 10 yes this is a WSON 10 this is 0.5 mm pitch one MSOP 10 this is also 0.5 mm pitch and the rest of the components are your standard 0603 capacitors and resistors and inductors we do have SOD3 Two, three diodes here a couple of them uh, some 0603 LEDs one crystal standard SOT23 and a smaller SOT323 here we have one quite big SOIC8 this is the narrow body one 150 mil we have uh, USB type C and we have one GST PH 2.0 mm connector this is the tallest guy on the entire board at 5.5 mm the machine can do all the way up to about 7 or 7 plus mm I am not too sure on that but it's about around that and we too have one tech switch here this tech switch is not symmetrical in the sense that both sides are not the same it will be interesting to look at this later and this is a SME connector that was soldered manually by hand other than that I think that is all we have on the board on the back of the board this will be a module that will be most probably hand soldered manually but today we'll be only be using the top side of the PCB so this is a single board design and here is how the panel that we will be using today looks like it is basically a two column times three row configuration the column on the first column on the left is being mirrored to the column on the right and uh, we have our side panel here this is 10 mm thickness side panel yes it's quite thick i know but we need to make it 10 mm just for this particular machine i will explain to you later on why we need this 10 mm and the standard things the rest of the standard stuff are on the panel on the pcb panel are your fiducial we have one on the top left and another one on the top bottom right 
That is all. Okay, I gotta briefly explain on why I make the PCB panel to have an extra wider side panel. Right? This is one of our newer PCB panel uh, which I made the side panel to be 10 mm thick or wide. So if this is a conveyor belt, so if you were to slide in the PCB now, the machine is off. So you can slide in and slide out the conveyor belt. So you come in from this way, you stop somewhere around here where the optical center sits and the clamp would then clamp the PCB down. As you can see, our fiducial mark on the left top and the right bottom can be seen very clearly. It means the mark camera can look at them, right? So, but if I were to have a PCB panel with a narrower side panel this is 5mm this is from one of our older design that we make before we got the machine so if you slide the PCB in this way as you can see and you stop somewhere around here you can't see the fiducial mark I mean the camera won't be able to detect the fiducial mark it's been blocked on the top left the bottom right seems to be okay but this one cannot be seen so what the machine can do is you can unscrew this clamps and you can move around your clamps to unblock the view on fiducial marks right so but it would mean that for different PCB design you will need to change the position of the clamps depends on the design itself so you'll be doing this quite often if you have quite a lot number of design but what we did here is we standardized them to be 10 mm here 10 mm so whenever we slide in a board it always can be seen we don't need the need to change the position of the clamps very often this is good if if you have PCB that is not so big because the maximum dimension of this machine that can the PCB size that this machine can support is up to 190 so space might be a, a premium here so you might need to make a smaller side panel if space is an issue but if the space is not an issue i would advise to go for something like this then you would not need to change all this clamp position all the time so there you go that's the reason for the extra thick uh, side panel so back to the software now uh let's Let's look at the the PCB in our PCB CAD software. We we have installed KiCad on this machine, so we could view our PCB design just for reference wise. I'm gonna launch my KiCad here, and just take a look at the uh, our PCB design file. So this is the PCB that we are going to use today in a single piece design. But the one we are going to use physically is the panel version. So what we are going to do now is I'm going to export the position, the component position uh, of this particular single piece board as it is. I mean, without any rotation, without trying to make it look like it's panel version. So this is how the panel version looks like. The panel version is basically being rotated minus 90 degree and you also have a mirrored version on the right hand side but we are not going to do this today 
so we are going to export the position file from this single piece design so what you need to do is in KiCad um, I mean it should be the same or similar in any other CAD design software so go to fabrication output go to footprint position file so you need to select CSV the format and units is in millimeter and the files you can have separate files for front and back components uh, our board this particular board doesn't have anything to be mounted on the back but we are just going to separate them okay we are done on that close that down and we have not file here that we actually rotated the pcb so it looks like exactly looks like like our panel pcb panel the first piece on the top left of the panel so we rotated it first and then we are going to export it navigation output footprint position the same thing csv millimeter separate files for front and back right so we are done with that so let's get back to the software The reason that um, I exported two files with different orientation is to show you that the software would be able to detect whether your bot is rotated or is in the wrong direction. So let's start by importing the first default one that I didn't do any rotation on it. Click on import coordinates, which is this file, I'm on top. We are not going to be bothered by the bottom part because we have nothing there. So click on the top one. Okay. Once you imported that, this is what you will see. So by now, you need to assign each column to its correct uh, category. The first one, which is our reference, you can right click and click on label. The second one will be your value. So you, you assign it as a chip value. The third one should be your footprint or package. The fourth one is your X coordinate and the fifth one is your Y coordinate and the sixth one is your rotation or angle and the last one which is optional but uh, yeah, it's not mandatory but you can always put it as your reference which is the layer. Okay now once you have done that you need to remove any rows that is not related to the component position which is the first row so we delete it off right and just go through the list because sometimes there might be something that is not supposed to be there okay we found one so which is our logo we accidentally imported this in so let's just delete that off because the software don't really like anything that's alien to it i mean that's not supposed to be there and you try to put it there something will just go go wrong after that okay once you have done that now the next process is is to basically map some reference points or fiducial marks on your PCB to map it over to the coordinate system of the machine. So this can be done by using basically two points on your PCB or or fiducial mark if you want to call it or even components. You can use components or fiducial mark or anything to to map. To map the coordinates on the PCB to your machine coordinates. So the first, um, this 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 two points approach is suitable if you have a very small and not so big and not so long. Uh, to be accurate, uh, to, to say it in a proper manner, is is not too long because once the PCB gets longer. The amount of uh, error generated is can be quite substantial. So if you have some a bigger PCB or what, I would suggest that to use the precise method here, which they call it precise mode. Spell wrongly, uh -huh. but it uses four point instead of two. So this is what I would recommend, and this is what we have been using for all our panels throughout the thirteen months, and it has been working very very well compared to the two points approach. So, um, you can choose any component that is located at the four 
the most four corners of your PCB but we have basically designed our PCB such that we have four fiducial marks which is this one this four at the four corner of the board so let's take a look back at the PCB and you can see we have four points here the first one is uh, M5 on the top left second one is M6 on the top right the third one is M7 this guy M7 on the bottom left and then the last one is M8 on the right bottom and you might have, might have uh, noticed that we don't use that regular circular circle uh, fiducial mark uh, we'll explain why we are doing this okay let's go back to the software okay now we need to do to map to tell the software that which is which right so m5 if you recall just now i showed that it is actually sign 4 so we need to let the software know that sign 4 is actually m5 so right click and click on set as sign 4 and our sign 1 actually is a m6 we're going to set this as m6 and uh, our sign 2 is actually m7 and the last one sign 3 is our M8 M8 okay now we have done that now we need to fix our PCB on the conveyor belt right I have already fixed my PCB on the conveyor belt but it's not being fixed to the center yet so I'm gonna click the inboard button here but before I do that I would recommend you to reduce the track speed to something like 2 or maybe one because when you put something very high like eight when you were to click outboard that pcb is just gonna fly off towards the end and uh, another thing is i have already uh, adjusted my track width the conveyor track width to fit my pcb width this this is something a bit more mundane to do and a bit of uh, try and error but unlike some software that i've uh, that i have seen like machine from Neo then where they can input the width of the PCB that is something very good to have but uh, unfortunately we don't have it here but this is something that you need to do adjust but it's something that but it's not something that you do all the time I guess it will be okay so I'm gonna click on inboard now okay now the PCB is fixed on the conveyor belt so I need now I need to move the head of the machine to the PCB. I don't like to run my machine at higher speed, so usually I run it at quite low speed. Okay, we are somewhere there. Okay. Now we need to tell the software that which point on your PCB physically corresponds to the coordinate on the file. So you can click on zoom in. There's only one level of zoom here, which, which that you can use to zoom so you can see things more clearly. So uh, earlier I mentioned that we use a different type shape of uh, fiducial. We don't use a regular round shape or or we don't use the component as a as a point to map this process so one of the reason if, if you look at uh, our squarish uh, small squarish fiducial mark we can use the cursor to align the line to the center of the fiducial mark more accurately compared to anything else so this is why we use such a weird shape Fiducial mark. Once you are happy with that, the position of the one. This is basically M6, which is our sign one at the top left. So once you are quite happy with the position, you can click on save over here. Okay, click on yes. 
and then we need to set up the rest of the four points the rest of the three points the second one is over here okay if you're happy click on save this one is sign 4 and then let's go for sign 2 now try to put it as center as possible this process is very important so you should take your time to do it not in a hurry so I'm gonna click I think a bit higher I'm gonna click save now and let's do the last one which is sign 3 and I think we are good click on save then you are done then just as a routine check you can press to go to and the camera will move to the coordinates that you set earlier just go through them and look through it if you are happy with it you can proceed but if you're not you can still do some adjustment right one that has been done next process is to generate PCB data click on generate PCB data as you can see now the software detected that the PCB components uh, position file that we imported from the, our CAD is not being rotated so they know they know that uh, the angle needs to be corrected so click on continue right so now we have managed to basically uh, import our component position for the very first PCB on the top left of your panel right so but let's go through let's check check the components position whether it is correct so the first one is which is C1 this is a, de a decoupling capacitor for a crystal this is which is correct even the angle is correct and you can go on to look through the entire PCB to check for how accurate the processes taken this is something that you need to go through one by one and to make sure that everything is perfect perfectly aligned so take your time Check the angle, that's just one of the things that you should check. Once, okay, this is one of the most important component of the board because this guy over here it is a 0.4 mm pitch component which is quite small the machine can do all the way down to 0.3 mm but this is requires some special attention i think it looks pretty good because there is some uh, angle deviation here so there's a little bit of tilt here but i think that should be okay so let's proceed with the rest of the components okay we are done right basically what we have done so far is we have managed to map our components position from the PCB to the machine coordinate system right so that was using the original design file that was not re rotated let's repeat this process by using a rotated file I gonna repeat the same thing import coordinates but this time you're going to choose the rotated top okay open and repeat the same process we need to assign the column label chip value footprint 
your x coordinate y coordinate your rotational angle then the last one is the layer right after i delete any row that is not needed okay then that is a logo somewhere there yeah delete that guy okay then you need to do the same thing um, the m5 we need to assign it as a sign 4 our m6 is actually a sign 1 uh, m7 is actually a sign 2 and m8 is actually a sign 3 repeat the same process to, to locate your fiducial mark click on zoom you need to take your time okay click on save and repeat for the rest of the point click on save let's go for sign 2 Click on save. Let's go for sign 4. Okay. And again, as a routine check, just check off your points to ensure they are correct and accurate. And again, click on generate PCB data. This time, as you can see, they know that the direction of the component is correct. The angle is as it is. Right click on continue. But as we already have data earlier, they are, they are going to ask you whether you want to add import or you want to override. But we are going to just override the import. Okay. And we can do the same thing. Check the component's position again for accuracy. Okay. It should be the same. As you can see, the angle is also the same as previously. Just go through all the components, just like what we did earlier, just to ensure that everything is spot on. I gotta zoom up. It's easier for us to see. Okay, and we are done for the first part. Now, what we need to do next is to go to the PCB array section. This is to duplicate the data over here to the rest of the board in the panel. As our PCB, our panel, has, has a mirrored version of the one on the left, on the right hand side, what we need to do now, the first step is to, to generate the data for, for this side, the mirror side first, the, for the first row. That is the first step, right? Then after that, we need to duplicate it across the entire panel. So the first step, you need to click on the couple PCB because we have a mirror PCB. It used to be called AIX or in, in the documentation, I think if I'm not wrong, it was called as Mandarin Duck. <laughs> I, I think it's quite true. <laughs> okay, now because our PCB is uh, mirrored on this on the right hand side i i do believe that the term used here is is maybe it's not accurate it should be the other way around but let's just look at the graphic instead of the word 
Okay, now I need to select two points on the PCB on the, the original PCB on the left and uh, I'm gonna use again I'm gonna use this point that our fiducial mark earlier because it's easier to use accurately I'm gonna use it use it as the point for the red color red color point over here so once you're happy with the position click on this box and click on save right and usually for the yellow one i would choose a position that is uh, on the opposite corner of this board instead of following the graphic directly this would allow it to compensate for any angle deviation or some error due to angle rotation of the pcb panel on the conveyor belt so again, I'm going to choose this guy, which is our M7 earlier. Okay, once you're happy, click on this one. Then you turn white, the rest will be still gray. And click on save. Right, now we need to repeat and tell the software that this particular yellow guy coordinate here corresponds to this guy on the mirrored version of the PCB which is our M7 okay I can push it a bit down and click on again click on this box before you click save to ensure you are se selecting the correct uh, reference point click on save and now we're gonna mark the red color point of the mirrored PCB which is this guy again this is a very important step take your time because if, it's, if it is being done inaccurately all the components in the entire panel might be a bit off so take your time and then click on save once you are, before you do the next step, I would suggest again do a routine check and go for all the points and double check that they are at the correct location. Okay, I think we are okay. Okay, then you can click on generate couple PCB. As you can see, at the bottom here, the mirrored PCB uh, component position has been added to the panel. Now we need to repeat, repeat this another three, uh, for three times. So basically, this is considered as one column. We need to repeat it as three times. So entirely, we will have six pieces, pieces of the PCB. And again, the process is similar here. We need to choose two points from the first row. Again, I'm going to choose one of the fiducial marks here at the top. But you have to be consistent what you're choosing over here. Okay, this should be this point here, the top right. I'm going to click save. And then the one on the far left, I'll be choosing the M6 fiducial mark. Again, click on save and you should Go down towards the last row. This is the second row, and this is the last row. And you need to click the same point as the above row. You can click on save, and let's do the last one, which is on the far right.
quite I think we are good click on save again do a routine check once you are happy click on generate PCB array there you go now we have six pieces of the PCB in our entire panel right this particular post this option here precise correct each I, I have never used this part before this option but I have never need to use them and I'm not sure how to use them too so but until then if we we're not going to use it I'm not going to try to use it for now maybe in another video if we come to a situation where we need to fix any inaccuracy of the generated data then I might look into this again so now just close the dialog of the PCB array and now if you look to your list of your component position now you have every single component right you can just simply click one which is this guy in the last this guy is actually the last bot on the bottom right of the panel and again you can go through every single components look through them until you are happy Okay, you can do this on your own and but what I'm going to do now the next thing is as the fiducial mark are actually not components they need to be removed from the list so I'm going to delete them and I'm going to do this for the rest of the panel Just make sure you do not delete something that you want to keep. And again this is process is very important I mean if you were to proceed with this sort of non-component stuff in the list it will be a problem for the software later I think we are done and clear of any of the fiducial marks okay we are done so the next thing we need to do is to set the mark this is the most important step up to now because if you have reached to this point you should never never ever close your project file now and disconnect the machine and you know turn off the power or remove the PCB or do anything like that because without this step the machine will not know will not be able to establish a relationship between your PCB and their coordinate system on the machine so this is why mark need to be set before you decided that or oh, today I just gonna do up to here and you know I got just gonna power off everything and and you know head home so we need to set the mark our mark is basically on the top left the first mark is on the top left of our panel if you look at here so again you can zoom in to view the thing more accurately just take your time again this is such an important process you know okay I think I'm good and click on save mark one again it will take a snapshot of the traditional mark so let's proceed with setting the second mark
Once you are happy, click on Save Mark 2. Then again, you can do your routine check. Go to Mark 1. You know, go to Mark 2. Then you can run the Mark test. And there you go. Our Mark test is completed. Right, there are several other things like this enable mark one precision mode, which is again this part is not fully translated. We have tried this this precision mark thing, but it's just we just couldn't make it to work. I'm not too sure how it's gonna help the accuracy of the judicial mark recognition, but I think uh, this one needs some further investigation. And uh, the rest of the part is like this scan rate. You should just leave it as as it is. I never need to change this or do any reconfiguration. It just works most of the time accurately using the default values, right? So once you have done this, basically we have finished the first part of importing your your PCB coordinate position file. From your PCB CAD to our software so it's safe to say now that you can proceed to close your project or you know take out the board or maybe continue on a later time so if you have reached to this point I would like to congratulate you guys because I know it's such a long and dragging process to just do this one third of the setup job but uh, I'm going to continue the next section which is uh, is going to be about setting up the feeder and the configuration of the feeder whether we are going to use three types of feeder for the next section we are will be using the our regular pneumatic feeders and uh, the components on your tray and the last one the vibration feeder so just make sure that you are you are ready for the one because that one is going to be a lot more stuff to to learn so I hope that you like this video. If you like it, just give a thumbs up. So see you guys again in the next video. Thank you.